doesn't make sound check. Higher Technical and Vocational Education is hereby um, resumed. Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of our invited guests and may I request Secretariat to kindly acknowledge who is on time this morning. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, allow me to acknowledge the presence of the following resource persons. Uh, with us today are our representatives from the Department of Health. We have Director Joanna Banson. Um, Dr. Hill Caronan, Dr. Joshua Cedric Taguinod, and Ms. Madeline Casimiro. Um, with us online are our representatives from the Commission on Higher Education. We have Attorney Frederick Mikael Farolan. Morning. And Executive Director Cinderella Haro. Also confirmed to attend today are representatives from the Department of Education, Mr. Ruel Capistrano and Ms. Cecil Naive from the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations. We have Attorney Christine Carmina Manawag and Attorney Maverick Romero. From the Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities, we have Ms. Joy Samaniego. From the Sulu State... Are they already online? Then there's no need to acknowledge them. Okay, boss. That's all. Thank you. Um, we have a long agenda today, um, and I have in every intention of proceeding with it accordingly, regardless of the presence of our guests. Um, Attorney Spocky, you can talk while driving. Uh, I am... Yes, Mr. Chair. I won't ask you to read anything anyway. Let's begin. Item A, Senate Bill Number 2270, imposition of fines on HAIs for non-compliance with Republic Act Number 11053, otherwise known as the Anti-Hazing Act. Um, Attorney Spocky, I read the bill. This seeks to amend your charter, but I think it's better to amend the anti-hazing law instead of amending CHED's charter and including it as part of the functions of CHED. Your thoughts, Attorney Spocky? Uh, we do agree that our anti-hazing law needs to be uh, amended, Mr. Chair, and strengthened, but uh, we share your view that uh, a piecemeal uh, revision of the charter of CHED in or more practical, pragmatic way of uh, going about it, Mr. Chair. Um, may we hear from the Executive Director of CHED? Is she um, online as well? Claire, and the she, what's her name? Yes, but, um, Executive Director Cinderella Haro. Ma'am Cinderella, are you online? Paki po contact, Secretary. 
Upon reading and study of the um, proposed measure filed by Senator Tolentino, Chair thinks it's better to amend the anti-hazing law, Republic Act Number 11053, and insert the provisions being suggested in the Senate bill instead or in lieu of amending the charter of um, CHED um, insofar as his proposal is concerned. For this purpose, Chair hereby that assigns Senate Bill Number 2270 to a technical working group and to closely coordinate with the Office of Senator Trentino in order for the for a substitute bill to be drafted. So ordered. Representation of non-academic and item B, representation of non-academic and non-teaching personnel and governing boards. Um, House Bill Number 8349. There is no counterpart measure in the Senate. Um, in the Senate. Um, Attorney Spocky. Um, when I counted this, if we add these representatives, it will make the, num the number of the board members or board of trustees even. How do you solve that? We still have to consult exactly on who to add, Mr. Chair, but uh, it could be solved by an addition, uh, by making an additional member, considering that uh, uh, number of uh, members of our of governing boards also vary depending on the nature of the uh, depending on the nature of the state university or college, Mr. Chair. Uh, for those who are agriculture, for example, there are uh, scientific agricultural uh, colleges and uh, which require the presence of the regional, uh, which require the membership of the regional directors of the Department of Agriculture. There are uh, SUCs that represent all this. So maybe those things can be uh, looked into. Uh, we just need to do a better study of the demographics of the composition of the governing boards. Right? I agree, Spocky. I agree, Spocky. But I'm um, Spocky. UP, as you very well know, the Board of Regents includes non academic, non teaching, or staff in the yes, Board of Regents. Now, this is not present in other boards and or governing bodies. My problem is. Under the existing number of all state universities and colleges, the number is odd. Now, if I add one more, it will become even, which was never the intention of the law. Um, so you either add two or you add or you don't add at all, right? To keep the number odd. Yes, no Mr. governing Chair. board can and will survive if it is even. Palaging deadlock or may chance palagi ng deadlock yon. Would that be correct? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. I don't know how the House came up with this bill without considering that actually, but um, <laughs> kindly give us an inventory of the uh, composition of all the um, governing boards of all state universities and colleges so that we would see the application this may have or the impact this may have but i'm almost sure that 100 percent of these socks and looks um have um an odd number in their respective governing boards and we are going to make it even yes Mr. Chair. having said that um cherry by the first um further deliberation on house bill number 8349 pending submission by ched as well as the position of papers of ched insofar as this particular issue of making the total number of the members of a governing board of a SOC or look even when it should be odd. So ordered. Item number, item letter C, Senate Bill number 2277, an act granting free tuition for government employees enrolled in the graduate education master's program in state universities and colleges. Um, May I ask who, who can answer how much this would entail? Whoever can answer. Yes, Paki. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, if I may. Uh, I just received information that our chair would want to speak on this. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, our chairperson, uh, Chair, uh, uh, chair uh, Prospero de Vera, has requested that uh, this on this particular bill he be allowed to speak. Uh, but we're just waiting for him to be online, Mr. Chair. If we can request that this... Okay, I'll wait for him. 
Kindly let us know, Claire, if um, Popoy is online. Chair hereby um, the first um, discussion on Senate Bill number 2277, while we await the presence online at the very least of um, Chair Popoy de Vera. So ordered. Item D, free competency-based assessment for Senior High School Act, Senate Bill number 2281. Um, Number one, I don't know why this is with me because this is senior high school. And number two, although it includes TESDA, number two, um, this is being reviewed by DepEd right now with a view to lowering the number of years from 12 back to 10. I don't see any application of this, if at all, under existing um, policy directions emanating from the Department of um, Education. And for this reason, Chair, hereby um, defers further action on this measure. And should DEP Ed policies really be geared towards implementing a K to 10 instead of a K to 12 for the same to be sent to the archives? Sorted. Item E Recognition of Honors Achievement Act. Basically, this this bill says, filed by Senator Villar. Basically, this says, um, for the information of our resource persons, um, kung yung average mo pang cum laude, pang summa cum laude, pag magna cum laude, even if you fail in one subject, basta yung average mo sa total will qualify you as magna, summa, or cum laude, then you should get that honor. Because there are rules of academic institutions that if you fail in one, you can no, you can no longer be. My question, Spaki, my question to our guests would be, um, how does this impact or infringe on academic freedom of the respective institutions? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Uh, this is, yes, uh, this, uh, I, I also received information that uh, this is also one of the bills that our chairperson would want to uh, provide input personally on. So if we respectfully request that this be moved to another part of the meeting um, so that the chair himself can personally provide the input on this, Mr. Chair. Okay, pakitext mo na lang Spocky na pag natapos yung hearing at wala pa siya, finish or not finish, pass your paper na to, kabisado niya yan kahit nung elementary pa siya. Chair the first action on this matter while we await um, Chair Popoy in so far as joining us online is concerned. Item number F, um, Senate Bill number 2342, establishing a nursing scholarship and return service program. I presume this is why you are here, um, Director Banson. Um, Ma'am, I read the bill also, and I have I just have some questions to facilitate our hearing and proceedings. Isn't there a counterpart law already similar to this? Yes, Your Honor. We we do have the Doctor Para Sabayan um, Act, which is very similar, very similar to. So, sa nurse wala pa. Sa nurse po wala. We don't have an existing scholarship uh, as of now. Do you favor this, ma'am? I presume um, your answer will be yes, but still, I need to hear you say it. Yes, sir. Uh, we are in support of this bill. Um, did you read the provisions of the bill, ma'am? Yes, sir. I did. What would be your comment and our suggestions? Um, we, we do have a position paper, an agency ah, please. level. Can you summarize it? Can you share it with me in summary? Because I haven't read your position paper. Okay, sir. Um, we, we believe that uh, it has to be consistent with all the policies that are currently available. Uh, for example, the doctor to uh, Dr. Parasabayan and also the uh, scholarship that's available uh, right now called MSRS uh, that's ch that Ched uh, is uh, is uh, implementing as um, as a transition from the scholarship that DOH used to uh, implement. So dapat po sana 
doctors. That's for doctors. doctors. But we have to. Uh, we believe that we have to be um, consistent across um, across these uh, scholarship programs. So specifically, po, uh, Your Honor, um, uh, the MS, uh, the return service. Uh, agreement of the MSRS, the Medical Scholarship, requires a one-year return service uh, for every year of scholarship. Um, First thing is four years, so two years ang nag scholar, so two years return service. Yes, sir. Yeah, now, my problem is this. The bill says that they will be appointed to a plantilla position. Kung two years lang yun, ba't ko siya bibigyan ng plantilla? Number two, Buti sana kung may available na plantilla position for nurse because it is a fact, ma'am, that the DOH requirements does not jive with the civil service policies and there is no singular government or private hospital that actually meets your requirements. Would that be correct? That is correct. Um, it is, try it is being filled up especially by LGUs, by the creation of contractual or job order worker positions. So this is not realistic, even for doctors. We don't create that many doctor items, especially in local hospitals, because we simply cannot afford it. Yes, Sir Honor. That is a fact. So, sa doctor para sa bayan, wala namang ganda, di ba? Na plantilla sila dapat? Uh, what we do is we uh, we have NH, WSS, which is a deployment uh, or a placement program. So sinasalo po namin. And, and they're contractual. They are, yes. Only for three years. Yes. Yes, so, so hindi pwedeng plantilla. Um, uh, we will review the realistic... Uh, would um, would all the provisions of the doctor para sa bayan apply to the nurse para sa bayan? Um, I would Except say... for the amounts, yung ganun, di ba? Amount of the scholarship. Uh, most of it, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, yes. Ma'am, kindly work with our secretariat in order to clean it up and to remove that particular provision, a plantilla, because clearly this cannot be complied with and this might not might be used as an excuse not to render service back. Kasi walang item na available, so may excuse na huwag gawin yun. Um, and while we're on the subject matter, ma'am, since we discussed it, um, wala bang balak mag-usap ang civil service, ang DILG at ang DOH tungkol sa mga requirements niyo sa hospital? When I was governor, about 80 to 90 percent of provincial hospitals, district hospitals, and infirmaries are not compliant with DOH requirements on personnel. Um, that is why um, you, you rarely see a law increasing the bed capacity of a hospital. Even if it is a 100 bed capacity authorized hospital by law, Kahit na 200 na yung pasyente yung nandun, hindi sila magpapa-increase dahil an increase in bed capacity would also entail an increase in the number of doctors and personnel which clearly the LGU does not have enough money to pay for. Um, not only that, if the LGU, be it a city or a province, complies with the requirements of DOH for the staffing of a hospital, we will exceed the 55% PS cap mandated by the local government code itself. Hindi ba pwede mag-usap po? I mean, I mean, these are two government agencies regulating and are supervising local government units um, which clearly have to talk amongst themselves how to um, rationalize it instead of being at our heads, pounding us, um, threatening suspension of our license. I'm talking as an LGU, former LGU local chief executive. Try asking us to comply when it is simply impossible, both physically and um, legally. Kumuha na lang ma'am ng optometrist, wala namang ganun sa lahat ng probinsya eh. Di ba, psychologist, wala namang, wala namang willing. Anong gagawin namin? So mag undertaking kami, magpa-promise kami, yes, we're looking, we allocated the budget, so sayang naman yung fiscal space. Papakita lang namin na nag-allocate kami ng budget, wala kami mahar, hindi namin magamit tuloy yung pera sa ibang bagay. Savings lang siya to be carried over to the following year. I mean, try to understand where we're coming from. It's a difficult situation. Um, we agree, Mr. Chair. And, <laughs> and uh, sa katotohanan po ay meron na pong pag-uusap uh, and negotiation along those lines. But uh, we need to put in evidence and 
Uh, Now I know there are case. standards. DOH even, in fact, even made the standards more difficult. From one is to twenty, one doctor is to twenty thousand. Ginawa pa yung one is to ten thousand. Dalalung din mga kakayan yun. Hindi lang tumataas yung population. Hindi naman dadagdagan yung doktor. Um, I think it should be um, rationalized or at least in the transition na kulang pa tayo. Not to be at um, at the case of the local government units, um, given that they would want to comply. Health is an important service LGUs provide. Ma'am, pakipaalala na lang yung mga kinukulan. If there are discussions already along those lines, I hope this will be fast-tracked and facilitated. Yes, Mr. Chair. So, in so far, Senate Bill Number 2342 um, is concerned. Um, Chair approves this in principle and assigns it to the um, to a technical working group for the sole purpose of um, reconciling and making it consistent with the doctor para sabayan, with a caveat on the requirement in the proposed bill to um, include them in plantilla positions or items, given that there might not be any plantilla position or item available which might just be used as an excuse not to comply with the return service. And um, number two, given that it will be only be for a fixed period, one year for every year of scholarship, um, it might be impractical to um, appoint them to a plantilla position, even if one is available. And as soon as um, a draft bill is um, completed, um, Committee Secretary is hereby directed to proceed with the preparation of the committee report. Sans the uh, approval once again of the committee. So ordered. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dahil maaga kayo, ma'am, maaga na rin kayong pwedeng umalis. Pero pwede rin kayo maiwan dito kung gusto nyo, kung wala naman kayong gagawin at umuulan at baha. May test na ka na ba? All right. Proceeding on to item H, in so far as House Bill number 8211, 8212, 8272, 8273, 8274, Um, Chair instructs the Secretary to kindly communicate with TESDA. Um, sa dami ng empleyado nila doon, alam nga namang walang pwede mag-attend ng hearing. Kung may sakit man yung designated na mag-attend, andali naman magpadala na mag-comment. But the Chair nevertheless will not allow the absence of um, the TESDA representative um, from deterring action on these bills. We have discussed previous bills um, similar in this nature and Chair directs the Secretary to make these bills in line with the previous bills we approved particularly um, on the removal of the assessment part of the, of the establishment of TESDA training centers, especially if there is a TESDA training center within the province already. If there is none, That would be the only time that the, the assessment part would be um, included. So ordered, and the committee secretary is hereby directed, again, in line with our previous drafts on similar bills, to prepare the corresponding committee report um, to be routed and submitted to plenary. So ordered. Hearing is suspended. Item number I, 
Resolution filed by Senator Tulfo. Uh, ah, for, sorry. Letter G, Senate Bill number um, 2319, insofar as the conversion of Sulu State College into a university, Chair hereby approves the same subject to the provisions of earlier conversions. Hindi na kita tatanong yan, Ma'am Harris, Baki. That they will comply with all of the requirements of said without a timetable or time frame, and that um, and that um, as soon as they comply, they are authorized by this amendment to their charter to become a university upon so so being certified by the said. Chair hereby approves, subject to those conditions and provisions, Senate Bill Number 2319, and the Secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee report. Now, on item I, alleged and unfair improper grading of um, the University of uh, Manila, a resolution, resolution number 700, filed by Senator Tulfo. For the record, we were informed by the Office of Senator Tulfo that there will be a second mediation meeting between CHED and the University of Manila on Tuesday. We invited the University of Manila representatives and um, have uh, reached out to them insofar as this hearing is concerned, but to no um, avail. Is there a representative from the University of Manila here? Given that there is none without adequate explanation, Chair hereby orders the Secretary to write them um, to show cause and to explain why they should not be cited in contempt for um, not honoring the, the invitation of the committee, or at the very least, explaining their absence or unavailability. Um, secondarily, given the um, mediation meeting that will be conducted on Tuesday between SHED and UM, Chair hereby defers action on this matter and will be rescheduled in the next hearing of the committee. Third, Now, for some administrative matters, we text municipal boy. For some administrative matters, Senate Bill Number Two Two Six Nine, filed by Senator Cynthia Villar, providing for the guidelines for the establishment and operation of local colleges and universities. A similar bill, Senate Bill Number Nineteen Ninety Nine and House Bill Number Sixty Six Thirty, was already heard by this committee last May Eleven, and referred to the to TWG. Chair hereby orders that Senate Bill Number Two Two Six Nine be consolidated with Senate Bill Number 1999 and 6630. Um, in so far as Senate Bill Number 2276 and 2312 is concerned, similar bills um, were previously filed and acted upon by the committee last August 1, namely Senate Bill Number 2115 and House Bill Number 7721. Chair hereby orders that Senate Bill Number 2276 and 2312 be consolidated with Senate Bill Number 2115 and 7721. Senate Bill Number 2286 filed by Senator Estrada and Senate Bill Number 2363 filed by Senator Revilla. These are hereby ordered consolidated with Senate Bill Number 2201 and House Bill Number 7602 on a similar subject matter, which um, the committee heard last August 1 and is already um, for the preparation of a committee report. So ordered. Senate Bill number 2333 is similar to a previous bill taken up by the committee and approved by the committee, namely House Bill number 7370. Chair hereby orders that this be consolidated, kung aabot pap, kung hindi na, for it to be taken into account as this was approved already by the committee last August 1 and for preparation of the corresponding committee report. Item number N, um, Senate Bill number 2341 um, is hereby ordered consolidated with Senate Bill number 716 as this was heard last September 7, 2022. And Spocky, we are still awaiting data from HEIs to submit um, their course offerings on foreign language. Baka naman may data kayo kindly submit it to the committee. In so far as the, the foreign language elective courses they are offering. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Item number, item letter O. 
on the establishment of tested training centers, House Bill Number 8213, similar to House Senate Bill Number 1948, which we approved last May 11, 2023. Um, Chair hereby orders that it be consolidated with Senate Bill Number 1948, or if not, for it to be taken into account in consideration um, in relation to the aforestated Senate Bill. House Bill Number 8275 is hereby ordered consolidated with Senate Bill Number 1550, as this was already heard and approved last February 21, 2023, if consolidation is not possible for the same to be taken into account and consideration. I'll talk to them. Um, House Bill number 8276 is hereby ordered consolidated with Senate Bill number 1741, which the committee heard last February 21 and was approved already for the drafting of a committee report if consolidation is no longer possible for the same to be taken into account and or consideration together with Senate Bill number 1741. House Bill number 8277 is hereby ordered consolidated with Senate Bill number 1266, which the committee approved last um, October 25, 2022, and for the same to be taken into account in relation to Senate Bill number 1266. House Bill number 8519, is hereby ordered consolidated with um, Senate Bill number 2167, as this was approved last August 1, um, and for the same to be consolidated, or if not possible, for the same to be taken into consideration in relation to Senate Bill number 2167. Popoy, uh, Mr. Chair, I just received word from our chair, actually a PM from him, that he is currently unable to speak. Uh, he just came back from... Uh, China and despite his best efforts, uh, he's not feeling well, including uh, his voice is quite hoarse with some throat issues, Mr. Chair. Thus, he simply um, texted, uh, sent me the via messages manifestation if I may be allowed to speak on those manifestations, Mr. Chair. Hold on. I think Bill is The bill on... Masters? The free, and the free masters as well as the scholarship uh, on the uh, awarding of uh, scholars, uh, academic awards, Mr. Chair. Okay. Chair hereby resumes consideration of Senate Bill number 2277. Attorney Spocky is recognized for this purpose. Yes. On the Estrada Bill on Free Masters Education, uh, Senator Estrada's Bill on the Free Masters Education, Mr. Chair, for government employees, uh, the Honorable Chair uh, De Vera. Uh, respectfully wishes to manifest that uh, we do agree and we laud the intention of the bill but there are four things that must be considered first one there must be uh, an estimation on who will be covered to find its fiscal impact there are more than one million government employees who shall be covered what if all one million decide to uh, avail of such scholarship that would be quite problematic with such a substantial financial impact on government. Second, the DBM should be consulted on its fiscal impact. Can this be covered by the General Appropriations Act? Is there fiscal space for such a scholarship for government employees? Government owes SUCs $3.2 billion already just for 2022 for the free higher education. SUCs should be consulted whether they can carry the additional fiscal burden given that the lack of reimbursement is already affecting their operations. Uh, third, if this is pursued, this should this scholarship this should be a scholarship rather than just making it free so that conditions can be attached such as return service and paying back if they don't finish the degree. If it's just made free, then it becomes an entitlement that has no attached conditions. That's where we have the difference between a scholarship and a subsidy. For scholarship, conditions and requirements could be imposed. Fourth, better if this is not done through CHED for two reasons. One, well, if this is, uh, this is passed, if this uh, kind of subsidy or scholarship is passed, um, it would be preferred that this be managed by the different agency for... Uh, Two reasons. One, the mandate of CHED is higher education and the people to be covered, government employees, are not higher education personnel. It is not higher education as well. It would be difficult for CHED to impose penalties such as payback and return service. Second, CHED does not have the manpower to implement this given proposed, given that the proposed CHED bill is not, it's not yet passed by Congress. Better this be implemented by the Civil Service uh, Commission 
by the individual government agencies. So those are the four uh, critical manifestations on the said bill by the uh, chairperson of CHED, Mr. Chair. I completely agree with the four points of um, of um, Chair Popoy de Vera. Chair hereby orders that this um, bill be referred to a technical working group and to specifically invite the Civil Service Commission, the DBM, with a view to abiding by the suggestions of Chair Popoy, which the Chair completely um, agrees with. Um, TWG is directed to um, craft um, provisions that would put a cap or a limit so that the DBM can come up with a computation as to how this can or will be done. So ordered. Moving forward, Senate Bill number 2292 um, on the Recognition of Honors Achievement Act. Does Chair Popoy have a comment? Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. For the record. Actually, this is a matter of academic freedom. Uh, Chad, the position of Chad is that they should be left to the higher education institutions and their governing boards. Uh, right now, our current rules provide that um, the standards or the determination of who receives academic honors from higher education institutions lies with the gov governing boards of the higher education institutions. Only when those higher education institutions uh, do not have policies or standards or guidelines for such awards, would CHED provided guidelines be complied with? So as far as uh, as far as CHED is concerned, I think this is a matter that uh, uh, should be consulted with the higher education institutions whether they would want to waive or surrender a portion of their academic freedom. I'm curious, Paki. Is yes, there a singular college, before I go to Attorney Manawag, is there a singular college that... Um, that um, has this kind of policy? Na pag may binagsa ka, kahit yung average mo, pang cum laude, pang magna, pang suma, bibigay pa rin sa'yo. Or is this totally new? To your knowledge? As far as I can remember, Mr. Chair, I, I don't Not recall any institution with that such a policy, Mr. Chair. Attorney Christine? Good morning. That qu same question, ma'am. To your knowledge, meron pang college or university na ginagawa to? Uh, first of all, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, to my knowledge, Mr. Chair, uh, this is uh, this is uh, based on the dis discretion of the higher education institution. I'm not yet there. I'm asking, are you aware of any school that actually allows this? Uh, to my knowledge, Mr. Chair, none. So the rule is uniformly applied by all universities, both public and private, that in order to be given the academic honor of or their counterparts of cum laude, magna cum laude, summa cum laude, you must not only um, reach the average, required average, but you must not fail or obtain any failing grade in any subject. Would that be correct? Your mic, ma'am. It will be based on their policies, Mr. Chair. Um, now, moving forward. So what is the position of private schools? Meron ka bang state colleges, state universities? Madam? Okay. Yes, ma'am, please proceed. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, although students have the right to freely uh, choose their field of study, Mr. Chair, and to continue their course until graduation, uh, such right is still subject to the established academic uh, standards of the academic institution or, or of the higher education institution. And of course, Mr. Chair, this includes the eligibility or criteria for honors and uh, similar uh, recognitions, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is pursuant to their academic freedom, Mr. Chair. Um, Chair is inclined to agree, actually, with um, Chad and um, with Attorney Manawag that it is the proper subject matter, if at all, of the academic freedom of the um, institution. Um, Chair by instructs the committee secretary to communicate with PASUK insofar as their official position is concerned on this matter. Um, in the meantime, Chair orders that the Secretary communicate with the Office of Senator Villar stating the position of CHED 
the private schools and after getting the position of the public schools, which I assume will be the same, that this is the proper subject matter of academic freedom. And if at all, if he is willing to convert um, his bill into simply a resolution, urging the schools to consider this insofar as um, their academic policies on the granting of recognition honors is um, concerned. And if he should agree for the committee to prepare the corresponding resolution as a substitute resolution to Senate Bill number 2292. So ordered. Now, I was informed that um, upon the invitation of Senator Rafi Tulfo, speaking of academic recognition, habang dito kayo, um, by the way, Spaki, is University of Manila a SUC or a private school? It's a private school, Mr. Chair. Alin yung pag-aari ng Manila? PLM? Uh, dalawa, sir. Uh, dalawa, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, there are two schools uh, run by the City of Manila, Mr. Chair. It's the Pamantasan ng Dunsod ng Manila and the which is PLM and the UDM, the Universidad uh, de Manila, Mr. Chair. So UM is completely private? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, Senate, um, the committee hereby resumes consideration and withdraws its earlier order to um, suspend consideration of Sen Senate Resolution Number 700. Um, Chair resumes consideration of Senate Resolution Number 700 insofar as the UM is concerned, issues involving UM is concerned. And for this purpose, Chair hereby acknowledges and recognizes the presence of Ms. Mika Bakunawa, who is one of the students, um, if I'm not mistaken, affected by the action and or inaction by certain University of Manila stu um, officials. May I acknowledge uh, Ms. Mika? Ma'am, if you have any opening statements, now would be the best time to do it. You are recognized, ma'am. Kasi ang sabi sa amin was uh, inamin daw ni University President na marami talaga ang teacher na may Ma'am, I'm sorry. Can you begin, start from the beginning? We were not hearing you. You were in mute. Again, Ms. Bakunawa, you are recognized. Kindly introduce yourself, your circumstances, and your opening statement, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bakunawa. Hello, good morning po. Good morning, you're recognized ma'am. Kindly state your name and circumstances for the record and your opening statement, if any. Hello, my name is Nika Bakunawa po. I am a student po from the University of Manila. Please proceed ma'am. Ma'am, please proceed for your opening statement, if any. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, po, uh, gusto lang po sana namin i-present po yung complaints po namin sa university po namin. Please proceed, ma'am. So, siguro po, um, start ko na lang po na i- Thanks, ma'am. Um, Mag-start na lang po siguro ako sa pag narrate po nung sa start po, um, sa end po ng second semester namin. So, mayroon, um, for the context po, mayroon po kasi kaming dalawang 
um, final exam. So, yung isa pong final exam galing po sa ina-administered po from the professors and yung isa naman pong final exam galing po sa President's Office. Then, nung April 25 po, tinig po namin yung final exam from the President's Office. Then, April 27 po, tinig po namin yung final exam namin from the professors. Then, sa dahil nga po natik na po namin para sa final exam, noong April 27 din po nagtapos yung um sa so second semester po namin pero after po noon hindi po nabigay yung results ng both exams. And then from Excuse me, excuse me Ms. Bacanao, chair here by acknowledges the presence of Senator Rafi Tulfo. Senator Tulfo, we are in the stage of um listening to her story unless you want to make any opening statements. With respect to your resolution number 700. Hindi mo na, Mr. Chair. I would prefer to listen first dun sa kanya mga sasabihin. Ms. Bakanawa, you may proceed, ma'am. Continue, please. Thank you po. So, tulad po na yung sinabi ko kanina, hindi po nabigay yung results po ng dalawang final exam po namin. And then, during May and June po, Um, hindi um, nag-fail po na mag-provide ang University of Manila ng grades po namin sa previous semester po namin. So, uh, sa, during April po, end ng April, May, June, wala pong nakarating sa amin na announcement para po sa grades namin. And then, noong July 6 po, nagkaroon po kami ng application for candidacy for graduation. Sa application for candidacy for graduation, dun po inaasikasa ng mga graduating students yung mga grades po nila para po makapag-apply na po ng graduation. And then, nalaman po namin on that day na yung professor po pala namin, the night before July 6 lang po napasa ang grades namin. So, sinabi po sa amin na bumalik na lang po kami on July 10. Pagbalik po namin ng July 10, dun po namin nalaman na meron po kaming failing grades on say, uh, four courses po namin na hinahandle po ng iisang, say, ng iisang professor lang po. And then um, on July 14 po, nag-attempt po yung iba naming mga kaklase na i-enroll na lang po yung four courses na na-fail nga po namin. And then sabi po ng head of the registrar na mag-wait po muna ng consultation from Madam President. Baka daw po kasi makapag-arrange daw po ng special exam. Then on that day din po, nag-request din po kami ng meeting para din po i-clear po yung issue along with the students and the parents po. And then on July 14 po, um, sinabi po sa amin ng... Uh, head of the Registrar na hindi daw po magbibigay si Madam President ng special exam. And nagkaroon din po ng meeting through Zoom kasama po ang acting head ng College of Civil Engineering na si Sir, na ang professor po na nagbigay nga po sa amin ng failing grades sa apat na courses ay nagbigay daw po ng um, revised grades. And then on July 21 po, bumalik po kami sa school para humingi po sana ng update. And then nalaman po namin na we did draw po ng professor po yung revised grades po na pinasan niya. And then on that day din po, nag-ask po kami, nagkaroon po kami ng chance para makausap po si Madam President through phone call. Then nag-offer po siya sa amin ng special exam po on July 26, 27, 28. Pero dahil, um, but because of the gravity of the situation po, nag-decide na po yung parents and the students na i-report na lang po kay Senator Tool po yung nangyari. So, um, ang other concerns pa rin po na gusto din po sana namin i-address is yung faculty shortage po. Um... One professor po has been tasked with teaching a vast number of students from the school year 2020 to 2022, forcing him to ask higher students to teach subjects of the lower year students. So, um, sa University of Manila po kasi, during the pandemic, naranasan po namin na um, mga, uh, mga higher, higher level students lang din po ang magtuturo sa amin. 
dahil yung um, iisang professor lang po ang naka-assign po sa College of Civil Engineering and Licensed Civil Engineer din po. And also, um, gusto rin po sana namin isali yung mga plagiarized and copyrighted books. Um, sa University of Manila, though hindi naman po kami nila nila require, may times po, like um, nung first year po kami, yung ibang professor po nila require po kami bumili. Pero napansin po namin na yung ibang books po nila is copyrighted lang po or plagiarized galing sa ibang mga books from other um, authors po. And then, yung lack of transparency and unclear grading system. Um, dito po sa professor namin na nag-fail po sa amin ng four courses, hindi po kasi sa amin um, na-disclose yung grading system po niya. So, hindi po namin alam. Like, halimbawa po sa class standing po namin, hindi po namin alam kung saan po nakuha yun, kung bakit po 70 po kami doon. Kasi ang totoo, totoo lang po, Ang meron lang pong records niya kami is major exams lang po. Wala po kaming quizzes, wala po kaming plates. Um, hindi po namin alam if sinama po ba niya ang attendance sa grades po namin. So, ayun po. Okay. Mr. Chair? Senator Tulfo is recognized. Uh, Ms. Mika, um, the, when you guys uh, came to my uh, radio program, uh, nabanggit niyo sa akin, kasama sa inyong complaint, yung bang the professor after na kayo po'y binagsak lahat, uh, nag-resign, um, na-find out yun na ba yung reason kung bakit siyang nag-resign? At nasaan na siya ngayon? Hindi niya po um, in-open sa amin kung ano po yung reason kung bakit po siya nag-resign. And, and yung school, hindi ba nagsabi sa inyo kung bakit siya nag-resign? Hindi rin po, sir. So wala siyang binigay na reason maging school kung bakit after na bagsakin kayong lahat, basta na lamang siya nag-resign. Um, Senator Tulfo, with your permission. Um, Ms. Bakunawa, can you switch on your screen? Mahirap po siya pag-itim lang yung kausap ni Senator Tulfo. Eh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Mika? Ms. Yan. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, May, may question ako sa DepEd, ano? Uh, sino bang pwede kong tanongin sa DepEd dito? Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. May question ako sa Chad? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Attorney Farolan, tama lang ba yun yung patakaran ng uh, UM na uh, matapos silang ibagsak sa mga exams nila? Hindi pinapakita yung grades at hindi pinapakita kung paano sila bumagsak at bakit sila bumagsak? Yung kasi ang patakaran ng UM ever since daw eh. Um, Your Honor, uh, considering that the matter is still in mediation, I will answer more on the general, based on the general policies of CHED. As far as our policies go, and for all higher education institutions, whether public or private, uh, despite the fact that there is academic freedom for higher education institutions to prescribe the grade and the standards for obtaining the grade, uh, there is, it is expected that the schools... Um, show a degree of transparency by allowing the stu uh, giving the students feedback on their performance, which means uh, grades are, should not be arbitrary but should be based on the standards agreed upon by the student and the school at the start of the semester. So, dapat uh, alam ng mga mag-aaral bakit sila bumagsak at yung basihan ng grades nila kung bakit ganon, kung bakit mataas o bakit mababa, Mr. Chair. Exactly. So, kung halimbawa... Tulad na, actually, hindi na halimbawa, tulad nitong uh, UM na kapag binabagsak nila ang kanilang mga estudyante, hindi pinapakita ang kanilang grades at sinasabi kung paano sila bumagsak at sa ang uh, punto doon sa test paper, sila bumagsak at bakit. So, yan ay in violation doon sa uh, mga pataka ng CHED? Uh, Mr. Chair, again, uh, because of the fact that I am also the lead mediator and also... Uh, would be invest currently investigating the matter. I can only answer based on the existing and current policies of CHED. As if a higher education institution fails to show or is proven to, to have failed to live up to the standards of ensuring that uh, grades are given fairly, that the standards for grading are properly followed, that could be deemed as administratively actionable lapses on the part of the higher education, uh, education institution, Mr. Chair. With the permission of Senator Rafi, um, 
mediation and investigation are two different things. You cannot mediate and at the same time investigate. In fact, I question why there is a mediation meeting happening tomorrow. The issue is quite clearly cut. Did they violate existing policies notwithstanding academic freedom? And what should be the penalties, if at all, that Shed should impose? Why is there even... I even doubt if mediation is within the standard operating procedure of CHED insofar as similar issues are concerned. So to clarify, are you investigating them or are you mediating, doing mediation with them? Uh, just to clarify the matter, Mr. Chair, the, I am the director for the Legal and Legislative Service. Under the Legal and Legislative Service of the Commission on Higher Education, we have two divisions, the in Investigation and Enforcement Division, and the other, uh, other division is the Legislative Liaison and Mediation Division. Uh, we all, when I came in, CHED, that was already the process. And there is also CHED Order Number 1, uh, which provides for the rules on mediation of uh, the Commission on Higher Education. That's the reason why I said my office ha handles it, because the divisions are under my office. Now, on the matter of... I'll pursue Senator Tulfo, with your permission, um, Spocky. Um, so, what's the objective of mediation if you're investigating for possible violations committed by UM? You're mediating between who? The students and the school? Of course, and now, also, uh, Mr. Chair, add ko lang. Okay, kasi nabagit niya kanina, um, there's what we call rules on transparency. You did mention it a while ago. Mr. Chair. And kayo po ay kasama doon sa tinatawag na enforcement uh, group ng CHED. So, but yes, not to impose yung rules on transparency na binabiolate nila. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, we have already uh, made them, uh, we already issued, to uh, serve upon them the show cause order outlining their list of, uh, 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 list of possible violations and they have already submitted their initial reply on it. It's just that under our rules, once the comment or the order to comment was issued and a comment has been submitted or after the lapse of the period, uh, it, the process will temporarily halt to allow the, the parties who are not part of CHED to mediate. And the mediation would cover matters which can be agreed upon by the students and the school. This, the, whatever they agree upon, whatever the parties agree upon, this would not affect the... Um, the escalation of the matter or the enforcement of, of the enforcement of the rules of CHED. Ibig sabihin po, kahit na magkasundo sila, tuloy pa rin po titignan ng CHED kung may violation ng school. It's just that there are matters which this, minsan po kasi mediation, may mga bagay na interest ng sudyante naman ang tinitingnan po natin. Kunyari, gusto niyo makagraduate agad. If we follow the regular process of the investigation, it might take some time. Pero kunyari, mapapayag naman, o oh, sige, papabayaan na lang namin sila mag-exam. O sige, papabayaan namin sila mag-graduate. And there are times that that happens, that saves time uh, when it comes to the student's welfare. But it doesn't mean that CHED will waves its power to enforce and ensure that UM is compliant with the uh, regulations of CHED, Mr. Chair. So for the record, to summarize, CHED is mediating between the students, acting as mediator, as between the students affected on the one hand and UM on the other hand. Yes, Mr. Chair. And number two, hindi niyo iko compromise or you give, you give up in any way your jurisdiction and ability of said to impose whatever penalty you may deem fit um, should you find any violations on the part of UM. Would that be correct? Yes, Mr. Chair, and most and definitely it appears that there is, it is also time for UM to be subjected to a monitoring visit, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, um, please proceed, Senator Tulfo. Okay, um, Attorney Farolan, so meron kayo nakita ng violation sa uh, UM. Pakiulit ulit, ano ano to mga violations na ito? Uh, actually, it's still in the process of an investigation, Mr. Chair, but our show cause order... Um, I, I just don't have a copy right now, but... Uh, the process, gano'ng katagal niyo na po in-investigan itong UM since uh, we, this, um, yung, yung complaint ay na iparating na namin sa inyo? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, they have already, they have already uh, 
uh, answered. We have already served them with the order. No, I just need to know from you straight up front. Ano ano to mga violations na nakita niyo? Kasi you've been talking to the students and um, we we've, we've been uh, coordinating with you for weeks and Actually, even months now. Uh, and hanggang ngayon. But once the mediation so is still nga, completed, nga, attorney, yes, sir. Sabi niyo na sa atin ngayon para malaman din ng mga estudyante at malaman ng UM kung ano ano yung mga violations nila, ano ano yung mga kamalian na ginawa nila laban sa kanta mga estudyante. Ay, yes, Ay, yes so, direction niyo na po kami, direction niyo mga estudyante. Matagal na silang sa suffer. Eh. They've been suffering for so many months now, even in the parents as well. Binibitin niyo pa kami. Sabi yeah. niyo na ano yung mga violations nila. Base po doon sa inyong ginagawa investigasyon. Sir, sir, doon sa... Come on, let's tell us in. Okay, isa. Okay. Number one. We do have a list of possible... And what are those possible violations? What are those lists? Number one, ano? Uh, just to summarize them po. Go we ahead. do find a problem with their grading system. Grading if system. The, if the allegations are true, there is a problem with the grading system. They are not complying. No, the allegations are true. They'll get we, we, and, and you know for a fact that may mga evidence sila. Okay, grading yes, system. Sir, ba, may evidence sila doon. Baka kami naman na ma-question kasi since we'll be we don't have an order yet. Sige po. Number yeah. two, ano pa po yung mga violations na kita nyo? So, nakita rin namin yun sa allegation if it is true that they have to explain why they are allowing uh, professors to handle too many subjects okay. for particular cases. Okay, number three. There were also allegations of illegal exceptions or na-collect na mga fees. Okay, good. Uh, for tutorial fees and for, meron pa nga yung isa, yung bouldering. Correct, correct. There are also allegations that some of the fees were done by a professor, so not necessarily by the higher education institution, but there seems to be an inaction on the part of the school to discipline or correct the possible abuses of uh, of the, one of their faculty members. Okay. So, iba, yun, iba yung... Iba po yung possible violation of the faculty, uh, which is an administrative matter na governing board dapat yung nagdi-discipline. Iba rin po yung kasi, in action. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, kanina pa sinasabi na it's true. Gano'ng katagal na namin nilapit sa inyo yung problema? Kung matatanda nyo sa? It's been how long? A month. Mula naman. Yes, okay. mula naman. So, doon sa isang buwan, hanggang ngayon, hindi nyo pa po nalalaman kung allegation ba hey. o totoo yung mga sumbong na inilalapit ng mga estudyante. Sir, diretso, abogado ka, hindi po ako abogado, okay? For, for that 30 days na nahandi nyo po yung kaso, and then yung mga estudyante na nakakausap nyo, and I'm sure to mga estudyante na kapagpresenta na sa inyo ng mga ebidensya, hanggang ngayon, hindi nyo pa nalalaman kung Sir. talagang uh, confirm ba o alleg yung, yung allegations o hindi? Sir, um, kasi palagi mo sinasabi if it is true. Sir, nag-iingat lang po kasi kami dahil since we are the one who's going to come out with the decision. I know, I know you should have come out with the decision by now yes. since more, it's more than a month. Sir, naka-mediation po kami ngayon, Mr. Chair. Yun yung sinasabi kanina ni Chairman Chief, mediation and investigation. Okay, in, maganda yung pag-explain mo. Pwede mangyari yun. However, doon sa investigation, para kayo po makapag-mediate properly, you have to come up with the result of your investigation para yun ang magiging bala nyo against doon sa eskwelahan nang sa gayon, you have the upper hand pagdating sa mediation. Right? Um, kasama po yun sa tinitingnan natin, Mr. No. No. Sir, kasi if, if kung meron kang bala, after na pag, na, sa ginawa ng investigasyon and you find out na napakarami talagang violation, so when you sit down with them, meron ka ng hawak ng mga bala. So you have the upper hand na para idikta at kung gusto niyo mangyari on behalf of the student pag doon sa mga estudyante pagdating sa mediation table. Di ba? Sa ngayon kasi, you go to mediation na wala ka pang bala, wala ka may presenta doon sa mga estudyante sa UM because you say you're still doing an investigation. Kaya nga, sabi mo, if it's true. So, pupunta ka doon sa, sa mediation, lagi mo sasabihin, if it is true, this is your, this will be your sanction, this will be your penalty. If it's true, puro if it's true. Dapat, pag pumunta ka doon sa mediation table, ito po ang nakita namin, mali kayo. 
Number one, ito'y mali mo, number two, at ito'y mga pieces of evidence. Number three, ito'y mga pieces of evidence na kayo mali na naman. Five, six, ngayon pag-upo sa mediation table, hindi na masyado makakapalag yung UM. I mean, Mr. Chair, uh, may I be, we would be willing to share, Mr. Chair, if we can request for an executive session uh, with the committee. But so we can no, no, trans in terms of transparency, you have to... You have to speak up. At nandito yung mga estudyante, ayoko naman na magbubulong-bulong lang tayo at yung mga estudyante, hindi na pakikinggan yung mga pinagsabi natin. Mr. Chair, kasi Mr. Kami, Chair, what do you think? Kami, kami yung magbibigay ng decision. Uh, what you're asking is to provide the decision already, Mr. Chair, which unfortunately we cannot do without prejudicing the, the validity kasi, of the decision. Mr. Chair, sandali lang muna. Uh, alam mo, Attorney Farolan, wala eh, mahina kayo eh. I'm sorry, na hindi ko minamalit yung Ched. Hindi sa nagmamagaling ako rito. I'm just using common sense here. Okay? Sintido ko mo, ika nga. Now, more than a month na hawak yung kaso nito. And then, in those more than 30 days, I'm pretty sure you had the opportunity and probably took that opportunity and the time to interview the students and review the pieces of evidence they presented to you. Right? So, and I'm sure nakapagtanong-tanong na rin po kayo sa mga taga-UM na buksan nyo ang kanilang libro, na kita nyo yung mga policies nila, kinumpara nyo, binangga nyo, yung reklamo ng estudyante versus policy nila versus all these pieces of evidence equals to ito yung resulta. As simple as that. Eh, nagpapasikot-sikot ka pa, sir? Uh, ang problem ko, sir, baka lang, ano, eh, we, we don't want to prejudice the decision that would be coming out. Uh, on Kaya nga, eh, it's 30 days na, hindi ka pa rin po nakakapaggamat ng decision. Ang tagal nyo naman, ang bagal nyo naman. Ito mga estudyante, they've suffered enough. They've suffered enough. And even the parents. If I may... Uh, Bilisan nyo yung investigasyon nyo, sir. If I may, Senator Rafi, I think there are two issues involved here. Kung ano man ang parusang ipapataw ng CHED sa nabunga ng, o resulta ng investigasyon nila sa University of Manila, um, sabihin nila, kunwari, um, Sir, mali yung professor. Hindi nyo sinarot yung policy. Hindi matutulungan non yung mga estudyante, but it can prevent the future occurrence of a similar incident in so far as other students are concerned. Now, that's why I clarified. Yung mediation na ginagawa ng CHED is between the school and the affected students now. Mr. Chair. Would that be correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. And as you clarified, without prejudice to any penalties after investigation which you will impose on UM. Yes, Mr. Chair. The point of Senator Tulfo is, may bala sana kasi kayo kung nando na. Now, I think what's, what, what would be fair to state, Attorney Spocky, is, um, sorry, first name kami, Senator Rafi, kasi matagal na kami magkakilala nito. Eh. Nagkasama kami sa Board of Regents nito dati. Um, I think the point Senator Rafi is driving at is he wants you to enumerate, given what you know now, the possible violations that you see based on the complaint of the students. Iba kasi yung reklamo dun sa provision ng batas na vina-violate ng UM. So, ano yung mga tinitingnan yung violation na nagawa ng UM given the circumstances presented. Next is, gaano katagal ba kayo bago magdesisyon kapag kami natanggap kayong reklamo? Parang sa korte, di ba? Spaki, you're a lawyer. You, there are certain time frames, di ba? When is a decision forthcoming from CHED? Who decides it? Ikaw lang ba? I elevate ba yan sa commission? Um, kaya lama mo pumirma ng chairman? Kindly enlighten us um, in so far as your procedure is concerned. Gano'n katagal ba usual yan? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, dun sa proseso, uh, once the complaint is received, and in this case, when the students were referred to us, wala kasi silang dala na formal uh, chronology of events. So we had we helped them first write down everything also. And then, you know, interrupt. Mukhang natitingin na silang dalawa, tumaas ang kila nilang dalawa. Uh, would you like to say something, Mika, para i-contradict yung sinasabi ni Professor? Kasi nung pumunta ko kayo, I mean, ni Attorney Farolan, kasi nung pumunta ko kayo sa Chad, wala ko kayong dalang mga dokumento at chronological events listed doon sa inyong complaint form? Ms. Bakunawa, you are recognized or your seatmate, whoever will talk. But um, if you will not speak, kindly identify yourself first for the record. Good morning, Professor Sir. I'm Joanna Marie Obsina po. And 
according po sa napamilya is nagpasa po kami ng written complaint for ng July 25 po sa TRED. And dala din po namin sila po ngayon. So July 25, you should submit yung written complaint? Yes po. Mr. Chair. And, and iayam ba, Ms. Nakunawa, uh, uh, doon sa written complaint nyo, nakatouch dyan yung mga ebidensya meron kayo to um, back up your complaints? Yes, and do you chronologically of events na sinasabi ni Attorney Farolan included dyan sa formal complaint ninyo noong July? Okay. So, pasagutin na naman sila. Okay. Yes. Okay. What's your name again, ma'am? Sorry. The one seated beside you, Ms. Bakunawa. What's your name again, ma'am? Joanna po. Joanna Maria. Joanna. Joanna. What's your last name, Joanna? Obsina. Obsina. Thank you, ma'am. Spocky, your comment, reaction? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, just to give a background, there are four sets of students po kasi yan. Yung mga taga-civil engineering, yung taga-business ad, uh, yung accountancy, and yung... Uh, criminology. So, ang pinaka... Okay, let me interrupt again. Yeah, yes, Mr. Uh, Ms. Joanna Obsina, uh, uh, kayo ho ba ay taga-civil engineering or sa ibang uh, department? Um, send po the civil engineering program po. And so, civil engineering. Yung other programs po, the BSA, BSBA, and criminology. Magkasama-sama kayo lahat? Opo, meron din po silang representative po dito. Sabay-sabay kayong pumunta at sabay-sabay kayong nag-submit na inyong formal complaint kasama yung attach doon yung pieces of evidence to back up your complaints. At nandun yung chronological events sa pangyayari from the start na nagkaroon kayo ng problema. Tama? Yes, Coach. Okay. Attorney. Actually, we even assisted them, especially doon sa tatlong natitirang programa, Pasensya na kung magkaibigan ka ni Chairman, ano? You're hearing us, but you're not listening. Or you're listening and you're not hearing us. Sinabi na nga kanina ni Chairman. Okay, pinagbibigyan ka na nga niya. Baka kaya kayo natagalan, baka meron kayong procedure, baka mayroon pa mga mag-review doon sa mga complaint, meron ba mga board, o meron pa ba mga kung sino-sinong Poncio Pilato, Herodes, Barabas, Estas, kailangan pa muna titingin doon sa mga reklamo bago kayo makaka-come up with a decision na ito na nga yung pag-decide namin sa mga complaint. Kaya kami tumagal tulad sa korte na meron talagang nakalaan na time frame na hanggang kailan ba dapat matapos yung isang kaso. Yun yun eh. Dapat pa sikot-sikot ka pa ito ni Farolan eh. Mr. Jeremy, Mr. Jeremy, Mr. Jeremy, Mr. Jeremy, just to answer the the queries on the period, Mr. Chair, uh, yung usual practice namin, 60 to 90 days to malabas yung decision. Depending on the time do we need to do okay, the evaluation. Okay, 60 to 90 days? Uh, yung 60 to 90 days, that would include the time na nag, uh, nag-iipo ng ebidensya, nagpapa, nagkakaroon ng inquiry kung kinakailangan. Depende po kasi kung ano yung reklamo. Bakit nga 60 Tapos, days po? Bakit 60 days? Ang... Paano sa, sa kaso nito mga estudyante, kailangan na nila makapag-graduate? Hindi, ngayon, ngayon po, kaya nga po inano namin na may mediation process din kasi kung ang interes sa mga estudyante ito tingnan muna natin kung interes sa mga estudyante nasa rules po kasi namin na pagka nagmediation parang sa korte rin po temporarily hinto muna yung pagbilang ng period para sa investigation but did you explain that to the students yes mr chair uh, miss uh, joanna na explain ba din sa inyo at paay kayo sa ganung klasing sistema at proseso Na-explain ba sa inyo yan? Was it, um, yes. was it explained to Papa? Na matatagalan, na naabot ng 60 days yung result ng ginagawa ng investigation? Pero was it explained to Mr. Chair, hindi po kami po nasabihan. Okay. Sir, we were, so, so I don't have any problem, Mr. Tarola, yung kung talaga yun ang patakaran ninyo na abot ng 60 days, na hindi minamadali para all corners are covered sa ginagawa ng investigation. Pero you should at least explain it to the students na hanggang 6 days tayo rito, ha, mga students. Ha, so wag mag-expect na in 30 days masusob to. At least man lang, makapag-ready sila at alam nila kung ano yung man expect nila. Tama, attorney? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, very good. Now, Uh, meron po akong suggestion, attorney, kasi, di ba, uh, 
gusto ng UM na mag-retake sila, bibigyan sila special exam? Merong nag, may offer and counter-offer yung mga sudyante, Mr. Chair, as of last mediation. So, ano yung offer and counter-offer? Anong napag-agrihan? Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Chair, those are matters of mediation are classified. So, I am duty-bound not to okay. disclose it. Maybe by in an executive session that may, may, be Meron kasi akong suggestion, Mr. Chair. Kasi, um, itong talamak na, na patakaran sa UM pag nagpapa-exam, yung mga katanungan sa exam ay mga bullshit. For example, bakit ka pumasok sa UM? Bakit ka bakit mo gustong maging engineer? That's that's BS. And then pagkatapos ng exam, bibigyan na lang sila ng resulta, hindi pa pakita yung test paper na bagsak. Yes, kasama yan. Ganun na nga yung tanong, mababagsak pa. Bagsak pa. <laughs> Exactly. Big questions, Mr. Chair. BS, no question. Diba? And you know that. So, our suggestion ko, lahat ng mga mag-exam, mag-retake, kailangan monitored at supervised ninyo. At kailangan uh, okay sa inyo yung mga questions doon sa test paper at hindi puro mga bullshit. And then, pagdating na doon sa pag-check ng test paper, kasama po kayo para masiguro na walang nangyaring bias doon na kung kailan lang gusto ng propeso pasahin sila ipapasa. In most cases, binabagsak sila sabay-sabay at pare-pareho pa yung grade. Kanyan, nakalagay 70, Mr. Chair. Lahat sila 70. Wala man lang nag-74 o, uh, o 73. Lahat 70. So, ibig sabihin, nagkopyahan silang lahat uh, para to deserve that grade, uniform grade, failing grade. That, that, that could, the, the, all those conditions are very reasonable and valid, and that could be arranged, Mr. Chair. Uh, but I think you, the student should be asked whether they are actually uh, interested in taking the uh, exams being offered or even the possibility of taking those makeup exams, or, Mr. Chair. Okay, sige. And then later on, siguro, sa mga susunod na pagpapa-exam ng UM, uh, sa mga estudyante nila, you know, in the coming uh, years or days and weeks, to yung magpapa-exam yung UM, from now on, dapat monitor na ng CHED kasi puro bullshit yung mga katanungan sa mga test paper. I will find measures on to ensure that they conduct exams properly, Mr. Chair. Um, with the permission of Senator Tulfo, may I ask the students um, affected, what do you want? What remedy or relief are you asking for? If attorney Spocky cannot tell us what's being discussed in negotiations because the mediations because he's the mediator you're part of those proceedings so may I ask what do you want and what is unacceptable in the offer and counter offer of the school uh, anyone Mr. Chair, uh, yung last mediation po na nangyari we are proposing po na sana hindi na po kami magtake po ng special exam but kung meron mo pong other options like special project po or other assessment mo na pwede pong mangyari, baka pwede po nila i-consider. Now, if that is the case, yung exam ba talaga, hindi naman siguro yun lang yung tanong na ba, kaya, bakit nyo gusto maging civil engineer. May mga tanong naman tungkol sa pagiging civil engineer in that particular subject. Would that be correct? Oh, Computation lang po, Mr. Chair. So, perhaps you can consider an option um, also for attorney Spocky, um, for the papers or the examination papers to be simply um, evaluated again since nag na yung teacher by another professor and to be graded accordingly with no additional expense or action on your part, no additional expense or action too on the part of UM, just another professor grading your exam papers. Would that be possible? Mr. Chair, pwede mo kasing it? Of course. Uh, hindi ako mag agree Mr. Chair. I'm sorry to disagree. Uh, kung another professor from the same school, eh, pwede mag-usap-usap na yan. Sila pwede na-influence na-eskulahan. Siguro kung meron man 
third party siguro from a different university or from CHED na kung sino, sino yung pipili ng CHED na mag-review ng test paper na kung saan sinasabi sila ni, na nag-fail doon sa mga computations. Actually, according to the students, they had only one professor in the entire College of Civil Engineering. So, wala naman na, na nag-resign pa. So, wala naman na talagang professor from UM who can evaluate it. It would have to be a third party. Um... Okay, kasi, Mr. Chair, di ba puro bullshit sa UM? Eh, paano kung iasa nila yung professor sa biology para mag-check ng test paper nila? O di, well, double true. bullshit na yun. So, third party tayo? Let's go for a third party. Question, out of curiosity. Why did the president give an exam to civil engineering students? Kayo ba yung binigyan ng exam o ibang course yun? Black for Mr. Chair. So aside from the exam of the teacher, nagpa-exam pa yung presidente mismo? Yes po. Yes. Every course po and every year po, every final, after po na final exam, lagi pong nagbibigay po ng final examination yung office of the president po. Ano bang qualification ng presidente ng UM? Criminology graduate ba siya? Sabay civil engineer? Sabay um, accounting graduate? Sabay ano pa yung isa? Yes. 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 Business ad? So, ano bang tinapos ng presidente nyo? Lawyer Buti, no? po. Ha? Huh? Lawyer po. Ah, abogado. Ang magaling. <laughs> si abogado, hindi mag-exam siya, i-exam niya ang mga estudyante sa civil engineering. Ang layo. Yan yung sabi ko, Mr. Chair. See? Kaya na, talagang another bullshit na naman. Ang daming ka-bullshit na dyan sa UM. Sir, dun po, regarding dun po sa final exam from the President's Office, um, clear po nila dun na sinabi po nila na wala daw pong way average yung final exam from the Office of the President. Pero po kasi yung mga lahat po ng professors talaga namin na, na nagturo po sa amin, lagi pong sinasabi na malaking percent daw po ang final exam from the Office of the President. Meron pong times na sinasabi po nila kahit po makareceive po kami ng passing grade sa kanila, pagbagsak din naman daw po ang final exam namin from the Office of the President, malaki po yung chance na bagsak po talaga yung final exam. There, there you go. Excuse me. Huh? Okay. Attorney Farolan, wala ba kinikita ang violation dyan? Uh, actually, dyan yung may klarong violation, Mr. Chair. Una. Thank you. Thank you. And at least yan pwedeng masabi, sir. Kasi yun yung outside the mediation. Na, na and, then, and then to think na yung, yung, yung uh, result ng exam nila sa kanilang presidente carries a lot of weight doon sa decision whether they've passed or failed. One of the things that we're looking at, Mr. Chair, so, ibig sabihin, kahit napasado sila, pag sinabi ni attorney, uh, presidente, kung sino mang pangalan yan, bumagsak ka sa competition, etc., etc., bagsak na lahat. Yes. Mr. So, that's a clear violation, right? Yes, Mr. Chair, but when in part of so, the... So, uh, so kung may nakita kayong clear violation dyan, ano ang sanction na katapat? Uh, among the possible administrative sanctions would be the closure of the program, uh, Mr. Chair, suspension or closure of the program, of uh, which means suspension or closure of the civil engineering program or the criminology, criminology program or the accountancy or accounting program where this happened. Okay, nasabi niyo ho ba yan sa kanilang presidente? Yes, Mr. Chair. They were and ano po yung kanyang reaction when you told that to her? Uh, well, Mr. Chair, uh, of course, they do recognize the power of the chair, uh, the power of CHED, but they also, of course, would insist that uh, the school has done nothing wrong, especially they claim that the UM has been in existence. Hindi, sabi pa nga ng presidente, sabi ng estudyante, eh magpasara na lang kami, wala kami pakialam sa CHED. Well, that would be extremely problem problematic for them, Mr. Chair. That would be a violation of the PSGs for the programs that they are offering, Mr. Chair. So, at Attorney Farolan, uh, sa so nakikita nyo, kailan ma-resolve ba itong problema ng mga estudyante? We, we just, as the 60 day we have suspended the 60 days, uh, the accounting of the 60 days because of the mediation. If by tomorrow they don't agree and they decide that we don't want to meet anymore, then we can start, resume counting the 60 to 90 days. And within a month's time from now, uh, a few days, maybe three weeks from now, 
uh, we can come up with a pa -pa 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 by the so, so, the decision is to be be issued by the commission and bank Mr. okay Chair. kapag hindi nag-agree sa mediation somehow you have to come up with your decision Actually, yes. even without, even with the, whether they agree or not, patuloy pa rin naman kami maglalabas ng decision except that while mediation is ongoing so that the uh, the school and the parties can focus on clear muna yung, clear muna, medyo uh, naka, naka ano muna, white, naka white flag muna, ceasefire muna. Pagkatapos itong ceasefire, magbibilag na ulit para makapaglabas na kami ng decision. Pero kahit mag-decision sila kung talaga may violation, um, we will ensure that the regulations of CHED are enforced, Mr. Chair. Okay. Question. I'll ask the students if Spocky cannot answer. Ang gusto nyo, um, additional workload na lang sa ibang bagay, hindi mag-take na exam ulit. Ang suggestion ko is have a third party, as amended by Senator Tulfo, go over your papers and grade it um, accordingly, out of curiosity, anong gusto ng school mag-retake kayo ng exam? Tama? Yun ang hinihiling naman ng school. Again, ma'am? Yes po, Mr. Chair. So, yung huling meeting nyo, sabi nila mag-take kayo ng exam, sabi nyo, Pwede ba ibang makeup activity na lang imbis na mag-exam kami uli? Yes, I'm Mr. adding a third I'm adding a third option that you can consider which is have a third party go over your exams, binigyan yung tinik yung exam, no additional exam and to grade it accordingly. <laughs> yung exam ba na pinapatake sa inyo bayad na naman kayo o wala? Hindi naman po, wala naman po. Sino magpapa-exam kung nag-resign na yung nag-iisang professor sa civil engineering? Um, nagkaroon po kasi na mayroon tong mga nag, nung tulad nga po na sinabi ko kanina na explain ko po yung um, issue po namin. Nag-offer po sila ng special exam then parang ongoing na po yung mediation that time. So mayroon po ibang students na nakapag-take po talaga ng special exam na yun and then yung questions po galing po dun sa special exam is galing po dun sa resigned professor. Um, sabi naman po ng professor na yun, okay lang naman daw po sa University of Manila na gano'n na po. So, um, ang ina-assume po namin, ang kung if ever po na magkaroon po talaga kami ng special exam, sa tingin po namin, shared sa kanya rin po, magagaling ang questions na special exam. Saan doon po Masakit na yung ulo ko. Sa doon sa school na yan. So, ibig sabihin, pag nag-retake, manggagaling sa presidente pa yung mga questions. Siya ang gagawa ng pag-retake niyo ng exam, right? Ganun daw yung ilanong mo na. Kaya nga. So, since yung presidente, wala namang alam sa engineering, ang alam niya, tungkol sa mga batas, dahil lawyer siya, wala siyang dapat karapatan na magpa-exam, magpa-retake. Tama, attorney? If I may, just to uh, set the record straight also, Mr. Chair, yung final exam na sinasabi nila, there are actually two final exams. One was, uh, the one final exam, which is in line with what's in the curriculum, was prepared and checked by the by the professor himself. Yung may second final exam, natawa, tinatawag nila final exam, and it was actually labeled as a final exam, where they ask those three questions. Yung three questions yung tinatawag nga kanina na BS questions are uh, were prepared by the by, by the president. Of course, meron silang sinabing paliwanag dito. Pero iba kasi yung paliwanag ng mga staff at iba rin yung sinabi ng presidente about this. Pero to take note, attorney, Mr. Chair. yung tatlong question na yun, final, question, uh, final exam consists of three questions from the president carries a lot of weight. Ma-override niya kung ano man yung result ng una exam. Kahit na pumasa sila sa una exam, pero pagdating doon sa three questions na hindi nagustuhan sa kapitso lamang ni President doon sa kanyang katanungan, pwede bumagsak na sila. Ano yung nangyari? In initially, Kaya naman natin ang suggestion din ni, ni uh, kung papayag mga estudyante, suggestion is ni, chair, ni uh, Chairman Cheese. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Yung mga exam nila, yung first exam, at least, at least yun na natin yung second then kukuha tayo ng third party na mag-check ng test papers nila. 
that uh, I've seen that happen before when I handled the case for UP, the UP 11, the MPH 11 of UP. And that was what actually happened, Mr. Chair. students, I think that's a fair uh, offer coming from uh, Senator Cheese. Na yung exam ninyo, para malaman talaga kung pasado kayo o hindi. To be fair, na yung exam ninyo, uh, mag-check third party. Hindi yung presidente ninyo at hindi yung professor galing dyan sa UM. Ibang professor na ang pipili ay yung CHED. At yung papasa, eh kalapag na pa talang mapasa, eh baka naman meron talagang uh, medyo <coughs> Uh, hindi uh, pumasa dahil eh, hindi tama yung computation o talagang nag-fail talaga. At least may pagmamalaki nyo. Ako yung pumasa at ang nag-check nag ng test paper ko, nag-grade ko ay ched na. Oh, wala nang kaduda-duda. What do you think, ma'am? Ms. Bakunawa or um, anyone from your group? Um, okay lang naman po sa amin yung suggestion po ninyo. Uh, yung third party po na mag-check po ng papers. Kaya lang po, um, yun lang po ba? Yung major exams lang po ba ang sauli na pagbabasahan po ng grades po namin? Ang problema nga, Ms. Bakunawa, hindi nila sinabi kung ano yung basis eh. Opo, kasi yun din po yung connect questions naman. Actually, hindi po na-present sa amin ang grading system. Um, meron pong pinakita sa amin nagsa grading sheet. Like for example Alip po, sa ulit. class standing po namin, meron po kaming 70 sa class standing. Then, based po dun sa student handbook, ang class standing po, binubuo po siya ng quizzes, ng attendance po, or other course requirement. Pero dito po sa four courses na na-fail po namin, wala po kaming quizzes, wala po kaming plates, wala po kaming assignments or recitations. So, hindi po namin alam kung so, saan. So, so, okay. So, in other words, uh, it's possible na hindi lamang sa final exam kayo uh, bumagsak. Maring may mga ibang bagay pa. So, sabi mo sa mga quizzes and... and um, wala pong ibang pinagbasihan po ng grades namin, kundi yung final, yung major exams lang po. Okay. So, therefore, mag-concentrate tayo sa major and final exam. Kung pasado kayo doon sa major and final exam na ang mag-check ay third party, pasado na kayo sa lahat. Tama? However, ang tanong, paano kung uh, bumagsak sa final exam? Pero, pasado kayo doon sa mga quizzes and all. So, it's a better deciding factor whether they will graduate. Final exam lang talaga eh. Excuse me. So, in other words, uh, ang deciding factor ay yung final exam. Okay? Yun lang talaga ang pinagbabasya. Yun lang talaga sukatan. <laughs> From start to finish, major lang. Bali, nasayang na yung mga activities to from the very beginning. Yes, yeah, please, ma'am. You are recognized. Uh, Mr. Chair, di bali talaga ang final exam lang po talaga yung final exams. Major exams lang po talaga. So, kung bagsak po kami ng prelims, bagsak na po talaga yun lahat kasi wala po rin kami pinagkukuha ng ibang grades like quizzes, grades po, assignments, or other course requirements po. Or, and at end of po, hindi rin po namin sure kung sinama po ba kasi talaga sa major exams lang po talaga sila nagsisir, nagbase po ng grade po namin na pinasa. You know, academic freedom in the student manual it's actually wide and broad enough. Um, for the record, for the information to of Senator Tulo, when I taught at the UP College of Law, I was given academic freedom as well. My policy when I was a professor there, tistigo kong buhay si Senator Sani Angara, estudyante ko yan sa College of Law dati. Eh. Um, pag perfect attendance ka, pasado ka na agad. For the simple reason that mag makinig ka lang, may mapupulot at matututunan ka na. Um, and then the final exam will be the Kung hindi ka perfect attendance, then you have to pass the final exam and that'll be the basis of your grade. So your minimum will be if you attended only, if you have perfect attendance. Later on, in fact, sa Mother Tulfo, ang ginawa ko pa, plus dahil perfect attendance, plus 0.25 pa sa grade pag perfect attendance lang. Para, kaya punong-punong po lagi yung mga klasiko eh. Kasi, 
but the, the, the logic and rational being that if you only attend and listen, you will get and pick up something somehow. Um, so at the end of the day, academic freedom actually gives a wide latitude to professors, but this is one side going haywire, and perhaps I was too generous and magnanimous during my time um, at UP. Kindly consider for mediation to Spocky and Tortor students. Um, Ede yung babagsak after third party evaluation, yun yung bibigyan ng makeup exam. Subject to um, checking of the third party evaluator too. Pagbagsak pa rin doon sa makeup exam na pinatawag ng third party, eh kunin niyo na uli yung kurso para makompleto niyo yung course niyo. Meaning, that's as fair as it can get. In my experience, minsan lang sa tinagal-tagal ko nag-aaral from elementary high school, poli and law, um, minsan lang nagkaroon ng P-grade, passing grade sa mga subjects sa UP, at least. This was in EDSA 1. Dahil ng kagulo-gulo, marasa na noon, di na pag exam the teachers were authorized by UP at that time to simply give a grade of P. Hindi numerical grade, P lang. P or F. But most teachers gave um, P. Kasi karamihan ng teacher doon sa UP, opposition at ayaw sa gobyerno nung nanalo na sila, edi masasaya sila, puro P ang binigay sa mga estudyante. Um, so, would you con please consider that? Third party evaluator to look at the exams you've taken. If you pass the exams, then you pass for those who will be failing. For a makeup exam to be scheduled, again, to be conducted by a third party evaluator, to be checked by a third party evaluator. And if you pass that, then you pass the course and you graduate. If you don't, then you have to take the course again. Spocky, you wanted to say something earlier? Uh, one of the requirements that we had the school prepare, pinihingin rin namin po sila nasaan yung records nyo ng class standing. Uh, how, was it, how was it broken down? Because part of the student manual uh, provides that this should be the basis for the grades. So hinihingi rin po namin na bigyan nila ng access yung mga sudyante para makita, ito yung class standing nyo. And as much as possible, we told them to start uh, collating already the actual exams and the actual quizzes so we could also look into, into them, Mr. Chair. My only problem in this situation, for the information of our students as well, and Senator Tulfo as well, whatever penalty Chad imposes on UM cannot and will not affect the um, plight of the students right now. Number two, CHED does not have the power to order UM to issue you a passing grade. Kung maliman yung procedures nila, they will be penalized for it. One of the possible penalties is to order that the course itself that they are offering be terminated and closed. That will now affect first, second, third, and fourth year students, not only you. Hanap sila ng mga ibang skwelahan. It's only through mediation, if at all, that your concerns will be addressed and answered. That's why we're trying to look for options that will be brought up in mediation. Unfortunately, UM was not here to attend despite notice. That's why for the information of Senator Dulfo before he arrived, the chair issued a show cause order um, given that they were properly invited, duly received, but did not even bother to send a representative or explain um, their absence. Um, Chair, earlier, issued a show cause order why they should not be cited for contempt for failure to even explain their absence or be here this morning at the very least. Chad, okay. Matagal na ginagawa to ng UM, yung baluktot na patakaran na wala palang mga quiz. Uh, so ang pinagbabasihan lang kung makapasama ng estudyante o hindi, mag-graduate o hindi, ay yung sa final exam. And this has been going on for quite some time. Ano ang nakikita niyo ang aksyon uh, para dito? No, knowing na uh, matagal na ginagawa to ng uh, UM. And moving forward, what is the solution that you see? Uh, moving forward, Mr. Chair, this, this you problem. definitely kailangan namin ng, to intensify our regula regulatory activities. Uh, yung investigation, enforcement, visitation, monitoring visits namin, mas kailangan. Yun nga lang, talagang, uh, pinag, talagang pinaghihirapan din namin madagdagan ng mga personnel. Kasi, uh, in metro, okay, okay. Given, so that's one. As, given, given the, the situation now, 
na meron nga silang maling patakaran. Yung, yung pangalawa, Mr. Chair. Pinagsabihan niyo na ba sila na baguhin niyo inyong sistema at ito dapat ang susundin niyong bagong uh, protocol? During the numerous, uh, during the number of meetings we had with them, sinasabi na namin na tong whether wala pa yung investigation, uh, wala pang final conclusion, but sinasabi na namin, kung totoo itong mga to baguhin niyo yan. Even, okay. for example, the professor, sabi na, Kung emergency yung nangyari, by this time, dapat corrected na lahat yan. Ito yung mga, we, we told them to revisit nyo yung mga policy standards and guidelines per program. May checklist na doon. Yung mga checklist na yun, yun ang titignan okay. namin. Okay, we were you pertaining to the aspects that needs to be corrected. What was their reaction? Uh, nagpasalama, una, nagpasalamat naman sila. Uh, titignan daw nila. But of course, there is of that, that self-defense mechanism that, well, we're actually doing everything we can to provide the quality education for students. Of course, yun yung, um, they recognize, they recognize it, but... Uh, but without the power na para pangimasuka na at uh, uh, magpadala kayo ng mga tao ninyo doon sa UM uh, to make po sure yun, that they're compliant? Yun po yung monitoring visit na okay. ini-schedule namin, Mr. Chair, kung saan bibisitahin ng CHED formally na ang UM. Kasi ang UM po lumalabas based on the, on the reports submitted to my office, ito yung mga programs na na-approve bago pa nabuo ang CHED. CHED was created 1994, Mr. Chair. Uh, prior to that, DEX, uh, MEX pa nga yung nag-issue ng mga permits to mga programs okay. nila. So it's really about time that they are monitored that the programs are properly being uh, okay. uh, but, but, implemented. Naman na you're gonna let them off the hook. And easily. Eh, yung mga previous violation nila, okay, moving forward, nag-suggest kayo ng mga bagong protocol at sabi nila they'll do something about that, right? Now, how about yung mga previous violations nila? Dapat merong sanctions na katapat yun. Ay, yes, Mr. Chair, kasama po yun sa titingnan. And those, uh, you, this and those sanctions are going to be? Uh, some possible sanctions. In, kasi pa, magdi-decision po niya na yung uh, commission and bank po ng, ng CHED. Pero it's a possibility, the, one of the biggest possible uh, penalty would be yung kinatawag dating phase out. Okay. Uh, which means, pwede i-phase out yung program nyo, bawal na kayong tumanggap ng isudyante, uh, papatapusin lang o papalipatin lang yung current student, exactly. th then end na yung program na yan. No, no, no. The problem na, na might crop up, with, with that, what you're saying now, paano ko hindi tatanggapin ang ibang mga school ah, ng estudyante kasi alam nila na bulok pala naging sistema dyan. Eh baka yung kabulukan na sistema ng UM eh madadala ng mga estudyante rito because they're product of a bulok na system so they're gonna bring in that bulok na system ah, dyan, naman po, dyan naman po, Mr. Chair, a personal uh, direction na kikailam ang CHED na masigurado na mapangalagaan din yung welfare ng mga estudyante, lalo na yung mga gustong lilipat. Ito yung nangyari sa Coleo de San Lorenzo, if you remember, correct? Nagawa na yan, Mr. Um, yes, um, Mr. Senator Rafi, nagawa na yan dati, and to be fair to CHED, CHED exerted efforts that these students affected by the closure of the school would find um, alternate schools. Because at the end of the day, although CHED cannot impose it legally and directly, they can persuade the schools to um, accept them and ju judge them based on their performance in the new school where they transferred, um, where they transferred to. Okay. Dun sa mga estudyante, final question. Nasa yung mga estudyante natin. Joanna? Ms. Bakunawa, can you turn on your camera again, please? So, Ms. Bakunawa? Nawala ata sila. Nandiyan ba ba? Yes. Ms. Oh, bago na. Ms. Joanna, or... Bago na. Anong pangalan ninyon, dalawa? What are your names? Um, hello po. Hello po, good morning po, Mr. Chair. Um, what are your names? Perfect po. Um, BS Accountancy, graduate last April. Ah, ibang course. Accountancy. Iba naman po yung, iba po yung aming, ano, um, complaints po. Because mm. we're graduate na po from University of Manila. But our credentials po is hindi pa po nila binibigay yung diploma and the uh, transcript of records until now po. And why? Because daw po, hindi po, hindi daw po kompleto yung grades namin from fourth year, second sem. 
Pero po nakagraduate po kami and nakapag-marcha po kami through ano po, via online po, YouTube. So, nung pinamarcha kayo, pinagraduate kayo, walang sinabi na hindi kumpleto ang grace ninyo. Exactly po. Okay, and then later nang sinabi na ay, hindi namin ito mabigyan ng diploma kasi meron pala kayong mga kulang na grades. Hindi pala kayo kumpleto sa grades. Yes, yes po. Attorney Farolan. Mas po nila ngayon, uh, Mr. Chair, dahil daw po, uh, hindi po nila tinanggap yung grades galing sa professor namin. <coughs> professor kasi, kasi this is the first time I've heard this from, from uh, some students na pinagraduate sila, walang problema. Sana bago sila pinagraduate, meron yung uh, nag-check to make sure na lahat na mag-graduate, pasado at wala silang kulang, wala silang uh, problema sa kanilang grades, etc. And then, after na sila makamarcha, mag-graduate, makapagbayad for the graduation fee, photos and all, and then pagkukunin ng diploma, ay hindi ka pala dapat nag-graduate. Sa ibang school, hindi po nangyari yan. And dito sa UM, from my understanding, that happens a lot. Mr. Chair, if, if before I've... you respond, Paki, um, can you turn on the camera, please? The student who appeared? Okay, yes. Na. Yes. Anong pinapagawa nila sa inyo? Bali po, ang sabi po sa amin ng University of Manila, pinag-retake din po kami. Ganon din ng po. Ng exam? Pinag yes po. Which At is magbabayad yung... kayo. At magbabayad kayo sa retake. Um, wala naman pong sinabi na magbabayad sa retake. Pero ang ano po nila is pag bumagsak po kami sa retake exam is magre-re-enroll po ulit kami. Which is... Amun! Yan yung sinasabag tinatawag na racket, scam. Now, let me clarify, Spakia. Siyempre, um, pag, pag nagbalik kayo doon, sa magbabad ulit kayo ng tuition. Let me clarify, Spakia. According to her, they went through the graduation proceedings. In graduation proceedings, whether live or virtually, there is a CHED representative. Di ba? In most of the graduations I have, I have attended. And the university president says the standard line. Um, the dean, at least, of the, of, the, of the school, of the college, will say, these students have qualified, have complied with all the academic requirements, blah, 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 and they are qualified for graduation. And the president of the school approves. But in the, in the usual proceedings, the list. Touch move na yun eh. That's the usual graduation proceedings. The dean presents the list of graduates, certifying that they have complied with all the requirements of the course imposed by the university. And then the president of the university says that he approves the list. Oh, but the retroactive effect sila na hindi pala. Uh, in, in I can answer that, Mr. Case. Chair. Kasi nga, gusto ng UM kung pagkakitaan ulit yung estudyante. Because they have to enroll back. And pag nag-re-enroll sila, ipanibagong bahay sa tuition yun. Pero touch mode na yun eh. Very right. right na yun eh. Exactly. Dito, very clear, na scammer itong UM. Do you agree with me, Attorney Spocky, that when those statements and utterances were made during the graduation ceremony, it already became a vested right from the point of view of the students that they have complied. As a rule, yes, Mr. With Chair. That, that's the reason why graduation ceremonies are actually not only pro forma, but it is actually yes. a legally binding ceremony. So, if the president herself or the board's, uh, the secretary of the university yun, announces yun, yun, that yun, they have complied. Mr. Roland, nakikita ko na agad eh. Advance ako mag-isip. Pasensya na ha. Advance talaga ako mag-isip. Pera lang yun ang kailangan ng eskwelahan. Kasi... Sabi, hindi pala kayo nag-graduate, meron kayo mga kulang, mag-retake kayo. Ngayon, pag pinaretake sila doon sa mga kulang nila na hindi na-take na, na mga exams, if you fail sila. And then, syempre, natural, pag nag-fail sila, they have, they have to go back at mag-enroll. At pag nag-enroll, magbabayad sila. Doon yung pumapasok, yung modo superandi sa scam. Sir, magdadaglaga lang ako ng detalye kasi ito yung in-invalidate ng school yung grades daw na sinabimit ng professor nila si Dean Salva. Uh, the school, based on information that I can disclose, the school terminated the services of Dean Salva who was the professor at ang sabi, we will not accept your grades. So officially, on the transcript, wala rin grades na nag-reflect yung mga sudyante. So it, it, it becomes a bit more complicated 
Kasi ang sinasabi nung... Maniniwala ka pa ba sa sinasabi ng school? Eh, matagal ng panahon, nagsisinungaling sila. Matagal ng panahon, ang lumo ko sila sa mga estudyante. Why believe them now? Diba? Go go ahead. Uh, ano, what's your name again? No, um, Angel. No, um, Angel, sorry. Mas simple yung problema niyo actually because quite frankly, correct me if I'm wrong, Spocky. Chad can actually order the school to issue the records and recognize their graduation because they went through that, as you described it, not so pro forma ceremony. It is well within the powers of Chad, right? To have the school submit the list of graduates, Mr. Chair. Yes, which they already accepted, as I said, vested right now. So, in the judgment of Ched, you can actually order the school to give them their credentials because, again, the right already attached to them when they allowed them to graduate. We can order the school to issue the transcript, but yung ang lumalabas yata ang paliwanag kasi ng school, if if I'm not mistaken, hindi pa nakareflect sa transcript yung grades. Yun yung problema. So, kasi kung wala pa yung grades doon, kulang pa yung transcript. Uh, Tapos yung... Uh, sorry, 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 pa lang, yeah. sorry, advance yun ako mag-isip. Ano? Okay. Sabi nga ni Chairman, Senator Cheese, pinagraduate na sila, they went through that process na na-screen na sila ng dean, the president, etc. And that's why they were allowed to graduate. So, ngayon sasabihin na ay meron pala kayong mga kulang dito pwede pumasok yung power ng CHED na sabihin hindi pwede problema niya yan kung hindi man kompleto yung grades hindi nyo nakita yan lapses niyan yan pinamatch ito mga tao therefore nagawa niyo ng mga checkish etc you should have done due diligence and everything kailangan makapag-graduate sila and you have the power to do that ilitin yes, your own school hand so yes, in this case ito mga accountancy student na hindi pinagraduate dahil ay nakapag-graduate pero sinasabi ngayon kulang-kulang kayo sa grades kaya bumalik kayo sa eskulahan you can dictate upon this school na no they have to graduate you have to give them their uh, transcript of records and diploma pasado yung mga grades yan hindi pwedeng may bagsak dyan if they were declared graduates already they should be solved they must graduate solved okay so may problema niya anong pangalan niya? Ano pangalan mo, ano, Miss... Uh, Miss Angel. Ha? Miss Angel. Miss Angel, sobrang problema nyo. So, wala na mediation, mediation dito. Sabihin nyo na agad, order nyo na agad yung UM. Release the transcript. Tama? Attorney Farola? We can we can terminate all the, the mediation on their part. Good. Sure. Angel, sobrang problema nyo. Okay. Pero doon sa engineer, medyo kumbatik. But subject to the CEB, we will be... Engineering. We will be bringing this up to the CEB for the issuance of the appropriate orders. Yung sa engineering, medyo komplikado pa. Sa kanila, okay na. Angel, okay na. So, may problema nyo. Next. Ano pa ang departamento? Ang may problema? Ay, ikaw naman, anong department mo? Uh, good uh, good morning po, Chair. Uh, ako po si Labnao Mary Cris po. Uh, BSBA po ako. Uh, batch 2015 pa po ako graduate. BSBA, same? Same problem? 2015? Eight years ago? Yes, Sige. Same so, 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 problem. Hindi, ang ibigay sa yung transcript at saka diploma. Tama, dahil kulang, may mga kulang-kulang para kayo na hindi dapat i-meet pa na requirements? Uh, yes po. Similar po with Miss Angel. Similar, okay. Similar, sold. Attorney Parola. Kero pa, Attorney Parola. No, same ibig sabihin, pinagraduate kayo. Tama ba, ma'am? Yeah, same nga, sinabi niya. Pinagraduate sila. You went through the graduation ceremonies. Tapos sinabi after the fact na hindi pa kompleto yung grades niyo. Kulang pa lang grades, tama? Apo, apo. Ano yung pangayon? Sir, sold na. Take care lang kung group naka-attention ng graduation mismo. No, Kasi, it, were you able to attend the graduation ceremonies? Yes po. Noong, noong 2015 po. 16. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Siya yung may problema with the internship. Ayaw i-credit yung internship niya, Mr. Chair. But she's still at same same basis. At the rest of the time, yun eh. Hey, sasabi nga lang dito at umuho ka na, pinag-graduate na sila, nag-marcha na sila. Okay? So dapat yung presidente o yung dean at mga teachers nila sa lahat ng subject na i-check na yan to make sure 
na wala silang problema, pasado na sila sa lahat, na kumpleto nila lahat ng requirements, kaya lang sila pinamarcha. And then, all of a sudden, magpasabihin nitong eskulahan, backtrack sila, teka muna, may mga kulang ka, na pwede. Kaya nga dapat, pati itong mga taga-BSPA students, kailangan mag-pumasok uh, mag kayo sa eksena at bigayin ka nilang transcript and diploma. Uh, tomorrow, Mr. Chair, once we meet them, we will, and if they are okay with that, th that would be the track. We will be terminating the mediation and we will be making the proper recommendations. Good. So, based being in accountancy, okay na kayo. Kuha niyo na. Criminology, same? Iba yan, Mr. Chair. Ah, hindi. Tingnan natin. Criminology, ano yung problema niyo? Same? Nasa yung criminology? Okay, Ms. Ray and Taylor. Okay, sa BSBA, okay natin sa accountancy. Okay. Criminology, taas ang kamay. Okay. Same problem or different? Different po, sir. Ay, nakoy, medyo komplikado sigurad. Ano yung problema sa criminology? Yung akin po, sir, ano po, ako in-enroll ko po yung subject sa isang professor nung summer po, tapos binagsak po ako ulit. Pinausap po namin yung professor para po tanungin kung bakit po ako bagsak. Ang sabi niya po, yung sa final examination daw po yung bagsak ko. Pero nung last week po, nung nagkaroon po ng mediation, ang sabi po ng representative ng UM, ano daw po, wala daw pong percentage yung final examination. So ngayon po, ang, ang inaano ko lang po sa University ng Manila, if ano po yung kung may, kung may ano po, transparency po ba na bagsak talaga ako? Kasi po, kung wala pong ano, patunay na bagsak ako, kahit ipasa na lang po ako, aalis na po ako sa school. Po, kunin ko okay, na, in short, hindi po nakita sa yung result ng iyong exam. Opo. Okay, so... At 24 lang, pwede ba natin ma-require yung eskwelahan na para ipakita yung result ng kanyang exam na kung saan sabi ng professor na bagsak siya? We have already, yeah, yes, the right. Right. We have already in for, uh, ordered the school to produce the, the basis for her grades as well as issue, uh, reminding the school to protect her also kasi siya rin po yung may claim against illegal exactions or illegal fees, yung nerequire na bumili ng bouldering. Tapos there are reports uh, right now that she's also being... Um, verbally and uh, unofficially harassed by the professor that she is complaining against. Oh. Ito rin yung ito rin yung may uh, yung violation of school is tinitingnan namin yung inaction nila on the complaint by the student against sa faculty na hindi inaction na ng tama ng, uh, ng HEI, Mr. Chair. Siguro, Mr. Chair, hindi lang dapat uh, siya mag-investiga, pati MBI siguro investiga na rin tong Uh, uh, UM dahil may nakikita akong mga scam na nangyari kalokohan at ang niloloko nila yung mga estudyante dapat we, have, we need to ask the uh, assistance of the NBI to go deeper into this, this kind of investigation uh, I can see a modus operandi na ginagamit nila para makapanloko makapandugas makapagnakaw uh, sa mga kawawang estudyante na hindi naman to anak ng mayaman tama-tama lang naman and they chose UM because they believe na UM will give them a good future eto ngayon sinira yung kanilang kinabukasan Attorney Farolan what do you think Mr. Chair? Attorney, uh, Attorney Farolan that's well taken but um, depending on the scale for sure pasok sa jurisdiction ng PNP ito but um, depending on the scale yung NBI kasi limited yung jurisdiction quite frankly eh kung syndicated na, kung syndicate na yung pinag-uusapan, kung large scale, o pag inutusan ng SOJ o ng Presidente. So we will communicate um, to the SOJ um, upon the suggestion of Senator Tulfo to look into this matter and will refer this matter to them. But in so far... Kasi Mr. Chen, nagsasabot-sabot na siguro yung Dean, Presidente, uh, para maging syndicate staff, how many people should be involved? Um, hindi naman estafa. Um, sin basta syndicate lang. A, a criminal organization. Yung ganong level na. But um, the DOJ can easily order. Um, 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 Senator Rafi. That's why we will be sending a, an endorsement to the DOJ secretary to so order the NBI. Because part okay. of the jurisdiction of NBI is whatever the DOJ secretary or president orders them to investigate. Even outside of their general um, mandate. But on this matter, um, Spaki, may guideline ba ang said na dapat sinosoli ang test paper o result ng exam sa mga estudyante? Uh, as far as I can recall, we have not, I have not seen a uh, rule regarding that. Uh, it, uh, 
ang requirement lang is if this is the, your guidelines, uh, the school must be able to show that the uh, guidelines for the grades were followed at the end of the SEM. And usually, we just re, uh, rely on the class records or the breakdown of the grades submitted by the school. There's a presumption of regularity on the part. Is of there the a year. guideline that says that they should keep records for X number of years? None either. Uh, the school student records, yes, sir, but... No, but on, the exam, records. on the exam itself, as far as I recall, wala, I, I can't recall any particular uh, period that they should so, be retained, Mr. Chair. As an outcome of this committee hearing, can I formally ask Chad to study the issuance of regulations to the effect that Number one, for all results of examinations, whether it's a quiz, a midterm, or final exam, to be returned to the students. Not only applicable to you, Emma. In the interest of transparency, this will not affect academic freedom in any way. Only in the interest and in compliance with the, with the requirement of transparency. That all of these be checked. Sa karanasan ko, may mga profesor ako nun, pag binalik yung test paper, ni walang sulat yung mga sagot. Final grade lang nakalagay sa harap. Okay lang din yun. At least binalik pa rin. Merong iba, pati yung English kinokorek. Meaning, at least alam mo, binasa talaga. But I think you can issue regulations to that effect that the result of examinations, whether it be a quiz, midterm, or final exam, be returned to the students concerned. And number two, for the records of the teachers to be kept for at least X number of years in case... Issues crop up later on, like the one earlier with the business administration course. 2015 pa yun eh. That's eight years ago. So baka may excuse yung kung sino if it happens in the future na wala na kasing records eh. So kindly consider it and kindly um give the committee feedback insofar as the direction Chet intends to take in regard to this um sub-issue in relation to the criminology student we just interviewed. Uh, on both matters, yes, Mr. Chair, definitely that's actually already in the pipeline. But we will also um, we will also seek uh, and consult, uh, seek the wisdom and opinion or input and consult with groups like the PASUK and COCOPEA, uh, considering that it also touches upon on uh, the academic freedom of uh, higher education institutions and higher education faculty members, Mr. Chair. Again, to reiterate, kindly convey with Attorney Manawag here, um, Man Manawag, sorry. Um, this does not, the chair believes this does not in any way impinge upon the academic freedom of schools. It is implementing the transparency requirement imposed by certain laws and by CHED um, itself, insofar as and from the point of view of the student um, is um, concerned. Also, um, in light of this, may I ask, are there regulations on the part of CHED as to when grades should be submitted? after a course is taken. I experienced that too. I had teachers at the College of Law submitted grades two years after I took the course, but all before graduation. If there are no regulations on the part of said, perhaps it's also time to set a maximum, which is before graduation, or two years, perhaps, no, or two years, perhaps. The problem, the problem, attorney, for Roland with before graduation, a month before graduation, baka nawala na yung professor eh. Baka nag-retire na, nag-resign, tinanggal, o baka um, for one reason or another is no longer available. Hence the need for um, the grades to be turned in within a fixed period, not necessarily based on the date of graduation or year of graduation. A reasonable, a reasonable um, delay would be a semester. That's it. Diba? For semester, nag-take, tinake yung course. Dapat bago matapos yung susunod na semester, so kung last sem niya na yun, pumasok na rin yung grades of first semester. With the colatilia that for graduating students, their second semester grades or third semester grades, if it's trimester, must be in within X number of days before graduation. If there is none, and I think there is none. Right now, the guidelines are vague, Mr. Chair. It only provides for a reasonable time. 
Precisely. But reasonable time may, may be impinged upon retirement, death, and unavailability of the professor within a short or longer period of time. We will be feedback. The committee also give us feedback and revert to us with respect to the direction Chad will be taking on these issues. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, Attorney for all, I'm going back to the issue raised by um, uh, the criminology student. Actually, we have already asked the school to produce the uh, to produce the records of the students so that it, they can also be reviewed. Okay. As for the illegal exactions, we do have the submission of the student regarding her claim, and that's already part of the investigation and part of the matters that will be ruled upon by the Commission and Bank on the complaints against you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so kailan natin malaman na hanggang sa marisulba itong problema ng mga taga criminology uh, We have a, department. a scheduled mediation tomorrow if they are okay, if the students and the UM would not be able to agree tomorrow or if they are okay with this with the planned course by today um, we are we can already terminate tomorrow and proceed uh, ito lang yung kaso lang ni Ms. Taylan there is also a request to assist to assist her in obtaining her records just in case she decides to uh, transfer to a different school and we have already assured her that if she decides to transfer, uh, Chad will definitely be assisting her to uh, obtain all the records she needs to be able to properly transfer to a different uh, institution, Mr. Chair. So, okay, so yan. Anong pangalan mo ulit yung nakablo? Uh, Taylor, Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. So, okay, so yun, sinabi ng Chad. Okay. Uh, and we have also, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Senator, uh, we, we, we also also instructed the school to make sure that whatever the student was complaining about, about the harassment, sexual harassment being called out in class because she complained, or yung mga parinig, uh, that they informed the faculty to stop that already. Any further complaints, that would no longer be, that would be a different case. Kaya, kaya nga, pwede pursue. pumasok dito yung NBI, eh, yung ginagawang harassment, yung pagbubuli, pambubuli, uh, dito sa mga estudyante dahil nagsumbong, plus yung Binebentan sila ng bull ring. Kapag hindi sila bumili ng bull ring, binabagsak sila. Now, ano po yung sanctions nyo rito? At meron naman kayo mga ebidensya, pinakita ng mga estudyante na pinagbebentan sila ng sing-sing. At yung hindi nag at hindi nagko-comply, binabagsak. Uh, isa na po sa binanggit namin, kasi hindi po namin sa ang uh, discipline, disciplining jurisdiction over faculty members of higher education institutions, natatapos po yan dun sa, kasi parang labor, labor issue po yan, natatapos yan sa higher education institution, sila dapat ang nagdi-discipline. Now, if they don't act on it, that would be an additional, the school can be made liable for not complying with our guidelines on student services. Now, on the faculty itself, dun medyo nagkukulang ng kapangyarihan po ang CHED because we really don't have any disciplinary power directly over the well, who, has the, who has the disciplinary power? It's it's the governing like it's the governing board of the the school, which is. Uh, ano ano yung sinasabi natin govern gubiyan gubiyan yun, yun nga sir. Yes. Uh, ang tinitingnan na lang namin isa sa na pag-usapan at uh, tinitingnan po namin ang angulo dito. If the professor is a licensed criminologist and she he is teaching criminology, uh, one area where we can move forward is to have the license revoked with the PRC. Kasi if the, in, uh, okay, in, in, yes. O, oh, kunyari, criminology license siya. Ta, siya yung gumawa nitong modus na kailangan bumili kayo ng sing-sing. Otherwise, hindi namin kayo papasa. However, sanction naman ng school. Ibig sabihin, alam ng eskwelaan at pinapayagan ng eskwelaan. Dapat may pananagutan din ng eskwelaan dahil pinapayagan nila mangyari yun. De definitely, Mr. Chair, as I mentioned, ang, ang issue sa school is hindi sila guilty na sila yun ang ulekta. Ang guilty, possible sila guilty pinayagan. dahil pinayagan o hindi nila inaksyonan yung reklamo, Mr. Chair. So ano pong pwedeng parusa, penalty dun sa school? Again, uh, it could be suspension, phase out, or even closure, Mr. Chair, of okay. the program. Well, wala, wala akong nakikita ang problema dyan. Uh, kung gusto ko lang mangyari, lahat naman naka-enroll ngayon sa kung ano man subject yan, uh, patapusin mo na ang kaong makatransfer and then pag na-transfer na, 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 na nalinis na yung mga estudyante ng Kendro sa mga subjects na yan o kurso na yan saka na tipays out. Ayan yung uh, that's a concept of phase out. to stop accepting enrollees. Yes, Mr. That's automatically included in a phase out order. Okay, kasi yan naman talagang banta ng eskulahan eh. Sabi ng mga estudyante na ipasaran nyo na lang kami. 
for all we care. Yan daw palagi ang mantra, naging mantra na ng uh, presidente ng UM. So matutupad na yung kanyang kagustuhan. Okay, um, so criminology, meron pa bang iba? Uh, BSBA, wala tayong problema, accountancy, so criminology, uh, yun, kasama pa rin sa mediation. Any other course? Ah, yun lang, apat lang. Apat, apat lang, lang. Mr. Chair. Okay. So yung criminology na lang at saka yung um, sa engineering, ang itutuloy sa mediation. Yes. Uh, yet, na. Tomorrow, Mr. Chair, is the second Schedule mediation and uh, we will determine what uh, programs or what representatives would be deciding uh, that they would want the mediation terminated, Mr. Chair. Any other points, Senator Tulfo? Um, uh, I, I think I've covered everything, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, except maliban naman kung meron pang gusto sabihin to mga estudyante natin ngayon. Um, anything else from our... Invited students from UM. May, may gusto sabihin pa ito sila. Yes, ma'am. You are recognized, ma'am. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, is it okay lang po ba to ask? Kasi some of uh, si, si students din po, is gusto na lang din po mag-transfer if ever po. Um, kasi po, um, nasimula po nung nag-start po kami magsumbong po sa kay Sir Rafi Tool po po. Nagkaroon na po ng start na emerging po na nag-start po yung school na pa, itinataya po kami or some even, ano po, nagsisend po sila ng threats po sa amin or yung mga students po mismo yung nagsasabi po sa amin na sinasabi nga po namin <coughs> na tanga po sa school, gano'n. Tapos, then meron po kasi yung mga professors, meron po isang specific teacher po sa University of Manila na meron po siyang video and then, sorry din po sa term na sasabihin ko. Tapos, sinabi niya po dun sa video habang, um, nung September 1 po kasi nagkaroon po sila ng virtual graduation. And then, habang binividuan niya po yung um, mga graduates, sabi po niya dun sa video, congratulations, engineering tool po, hindi mga nakagraduate. Then, ilan lang po yun sa mga instances na lagi niya po kaming pinapatamaan dun po sa mga posts niya sa social media. And... Yun po, um, yun po yung isa sa mga rason, yung mga message. Harassment and bullying ito, lumilito, Attorney that, that for Rollins. That is bullying. So, Mr. pwedeng pa, pasok na ito yung sa NBI na pwede na mahimas ko NBI dito. And uh -huh. then, probably sa cyber crime because ginagamit nila social media sa pangharas, pangbubuli. Kindly submit to the committee um, a complaint which we will endorse as, a, as the chair stated earlier to the DOJ Secretary for the NBI to look into um, the matter. Um, and we will schedule this for another hearing. And we expect a report, Attorney Spocky, um, as to the results of the mediation and further action taken by CHED until the next scheduled hearing date. But hopefully, Two to three out of the four colleges affected would have been resolved already. And by that time, too, we would have already obtained feedback from the Secretary of Justice, Secretary Boying Rimulia. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you very much for participating. We will be scheduling this for another hearing. And also, I need to schedule it for another hearing because UM officials did not appear. And they have to write us or send us a representative to explain why they were not present in this hearing despite adequate notice and um, why they failed to send a representative if at all if the chair or the committee will accept their explanation otherwise the necessary contempt orders will be issued against um and their officials anything else attorney uh, Sen attorney to late. senator rafi thank you mr chair that would be all chair would like to thank um our students from um chair would like to thank other invited guests as well just but can I dito, Mr. Capistrano? Uh, I was, sorry, uh, Mr. Chair. I was late coming from the office, from the Department of Education. Sir. Darling, nauna pa yung secretary mong dumating dito kaysa sa'yo para sa hearing niya. Um, anyway, we took up the matter already. Um, anything else, Attorney Manawag? Uh, yes, just a brief comment, Mr. Chair. Uh, earlier, I apologize for being late. The traffic was bad. But nonetheless, Mr. Sorry, Chair... Sorry, ma'am. Umabot ka naman doon sa pag-uusapan namin eh. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, but nonetheless, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to briefly comment on a on the first uh, bill that was supposed uh, to be on the which one? agenda. Uh, S, uh, bill, Senate Bill 
Ah, on the hazing? 2 to 3270. I referred this matter, ma'am, to a technical working group already, but I do not want the Ched Charter to be amended for this purpose. We understand. I assigned it to a TWG, kindly coordinate with the TWG. If at all, we will pass this on committee level. It will be as an amendment to the anti-hazing law, um, um, as provided for in RA 11053, and not as an amendment to the Ched Charter. Um, that is the direction that the Chair gave earlier when it was taken up. We understand, Mr. Chair. Uh, nonetheless, Mr. Chair, uh, we will be submitting our position paper as necessary. Please do so, ma'am, and please work with the committee along those lines. Um, I'm not too convinced about the penalties as well, but I want to see it in the anti-hazing law, not in Ched's charter. I, I don't think it has a place in Ched's charter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other bills you want to comment on? Uh, we will just submit the necessary position paper uh, on the other bills, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Attorney Spocky. Thank you, Senator Tulfo. Um, Chair, would like to thank everybody who participated, even from the DVM and other CHED officials. Um, in the meantime, given that we have taken up everything in our agenda for today, Chair hereby suspends um, the hearing of the Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education. Hearing suspended. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Thank you so much.